Howdy folks, Sean with Ordnance Lab here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give you all kind of an update for where we're at. A lot of our videos take a long time for us to prep it. We gotta go out there and film it because for some reason the city of Houston frowns upon setting off claymores in your front yard. There's ridiculous kind of things like that. So we actually have to put a lot of planning and effort into getting ready for some of the videos. It may take, hey, 20 minutes for you to watch it, but actually filming it takes two or three days of being on site and making sure we're doing it right. A couple of things I wanted to talk about is give you all an update on the Claymores and then answer uh, some of the questions. Actually, let's start off with some of the questions that we've gotten. One of the questions that we got asked was that, hey, can we sell Claymore holes? We actually got a couple of these. Can we sell Claymore holes um, just as a novelty item? So we've got our initial production of uh, trial holes and actually we're not quite sure about what the status of that would be if we were to sit there and take this exact same thing and try to sell it as a novelty item versus it being a firearm. One of the issues, and of course this is not legal advice, I am totally making this as I, up as I go, that if you were to take something that we're on the one hand saying to ATF that, hey, this right here is a registered destructive device, and then we say, oh no, the exact same thing isn't one, for that's not gonna be a very good way to do things. We try to make sure, it's always great when you see folks that like, y'all boot lickers or whatever for following the law, but for some reason, you don't see them getting on YouTube and doing stuff that would send them to uh, federal pound me in the ass prison. And you know they're not getting on there and doing it and using their, what's that called? The, um, oh damn, jury nullification to get off of it or whatever. So the answer to that question, are we gonna be able to sell them uh, to the general public is maybe. And just need to think about what we do before we actually go down that road uh, for it. All right. The other one is, is it do we pay $200 for each and every one of these we register? No, we pay the king's ransom every year. We pay about $6,000 total per year so that we can do this stuff legally without going to jail or bootlicking as some people like to call it. And Ben is out of frame here. Um, we've been here for a while and he wants attention. He wants to go home. I know Ben, I love you. Um, anyways, back to the lecture at hand is uh, whenever we register them, they're going to be tax-free. We send in a notice to ATF. We don't ask permission to make them like you would if you were a non-licensee. We pay every year for our license, and we just inform ATF whenever we uh, have registered them and created them. And so for us, it doesn't cost us anything to register them. So like a six-pack of Shiner Bach only costs us whatever it costs us to go down to the corner store, get a six-pack of Shiner, and then to get Cody with late, uh, weapons and genetics to engrave it for us to ATF specs and then we register it. So I hope that answered a couple of the questions, but again, I'm not an attorney and I have no idea what I'm talking about for it. Do not take anything that I talk about as legal advice and Ben is sniffing my ass right now. It's kind of awkward. Um, fortunately, that's all happening off screen. All right, so what we're gonna be doing with the Claymores is we've got our initial test for how it works. We've got this 3D printed by Jen over there at Texas Tactical Gear. Make sure if you need standard firearms in the Houston area, you check it out. Jen is definitely gonna steer you right. Um, for those firearms and whatnot that we, we don't sell at our level. So when we've got this right here, what's gonna happen is we're gonna find a way for us to seal it together as one unit, and then we're gonna use these the steel shot that we ordered. This right here is the uh, same size as the ones used in a standard Claymore. Now, why are we not gonna use lead shot? The reason for that is because the steel shot won't deform whenever the explosion happens. Whenever it blows up, give a bunch of steel shot, it's just gonna deform, uh, or, I'm sorry, a bunch of lead shot, it'll deform as it goes out versus steel shot, which will stay in the same um, uh, spherical ball as it goes out. And then we also have plastic explosives here. This right here is dead a sheet. On the, um, the actual claymores made by the factory, they typically use C4. This is like C4. For Christmas time, we went ahead and cut it up into nice shapes. I know, Ben, see, it's like you. I'm not gonna let you eat it, though. Ben, for some reason, likes to smell dynamite. It's pretty weird. So we got a kitty, we got the dove, how peaceful. We got Texas, hook em horns, and a heart because, oh, how sweet. All right, anyways, so what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna set in the resin with, we're gonna set in the shot with a resin, and then what we're gonna do is we'll put in the plastic explosives behind it, we'll paint it up, and then we'll mark it with ATF required markings that we have for a variance where we can use a military grade paint for us to identify it for it, because of course we're a bunch of bootlickers according to folks on the internet. Anyways, I hope this right here was interesting, a good update for y'all. Just something to kind of talk about, hey, the direction we're going in, what we're gonna be doing. Please make sure to check out our Patreon account. Again, we got a lot of cool stuff that we wanna do, but none of this stuff grows on trees. And make sure to subscribe here on the channel, like us on Facebook, and hopefully we'll see y'all soon.